on the 27th day of October, Halloween gave to me 27 Monster Elevators, 26 Busey's Haunting, 25 Isabel's Freaking, 24 Vincent's Farming, 23 Cushing's Ghouling, 22 Rudger's Glaring, 21 Baby's Killing, 20 Horset Snorting, 19 D's Renting, 18 Frank's Perving, 17 Angel Stripping, 16 Demon's Jazzercising, 15 Runes on Parchment, 14 Joseph's Whispering, 13 Seniors Bleeding, 12 Creepy Masks, 11 Dancing Demons, 10 Catholic Monsters, 9 Priests of Miracling, 8 Jerry's Vamping, 7 Jody's Oinking, 6 Body Swapping, 5 Reeds of Wolfing, 4 Drunken Uncles, 3 Werewolf Colonies, 2 Spooky Sisters, and a Psycho Who Killed Janet Lee. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to uh, October 27th, our 27th film in our 31 Days of Halloween. It is Wednesday, the Wednesday before Halloween. Uh, My excitement is only growing. Uh, I hope you are enjoying this list. I'm enjoying bringing it to you. And as I said, this last week or so of movies are just movies that I either dearly love or feel like I should have seen forever ago. This falls into the former category of a movie I dearly love. Uh, I was there opening night for The Cabin in the Woods. And although, you know, as time passes, there's always something that sort of colors my appreciation of a movie, it seems like. In this case, it turns out that Joss Whedon is kind of a creep. But eh, what are you going to do? You know, like let the art stand by itself, I suppose. Uh, That said, this is not directed by Joss Whedon. It's directed by Drew Goddard. And a lot of people forget that. Drew Goddard co-wrote and directed this movie, and so I consider this a Drew Goddard film, and that makes me uh, sleep a little better at night when I celebrate it. But The Cabin in the Woods was highly anticipated, to be sure. Uh, As I said, I saw it opening night because I was a fan of the creators and also the idea of Joss Whedon and Drew Goddard doing a straight-up horror film was really intriguing. And, of course, they didn't do a straight-up horror film. Uh, I went into this not knowing what the twist was. And so, when you see the beginning of this movie with Bradley Whitford and uh, Richard Jenkins just driving through this facility on a golf cart, chit-chatting about baby-proofing a house, it really is one of those things that's kind of, like, off-putting. Not off-putting, but, like, you're like, what, what did I sign up for? I know this is the right movie. Because the title said Cabin in the Woods, but so far there are no woods and no cabinses. Uh, so what What the heck? And, uh, and that's kind of the genius of the movie in a lot of ways. And as it reveals itself, um, it is so clever, it almost makes you want to punch somebody. That it's as smart as it is, and not all movies can be... Like, Cabin in the Woods basically explains every other horror movie ever made as being part of this effort and so you know obviously spoilers ahead for cabin in the woods if you haven't seen it the movie's been out for 10 years i recommend that you stop this and you go watch cabin in the woods and you have yourself a grand time and then come back and we'll 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 chit chat about it but the thing that makes cabin in the woods so great is that it is a movie where the actual horror movie part of it is kind of a MacGuffin. So you have, you know, uh, your cast of characters. You have Chris Hemsworth as your big, studly, uh, quarterback-looking guy. Um, You've got his girlfriend, um, who is sort of the the bombshell, the the sexy one. The whore, as they refer to her in the the later portion of the film. Um, You've got the virgin... You've got the fool, uh, who, who is your stoner character. And then you've got kind of the best friend being pulled along to ostensibly be the love interest for um, our final girl. And Chris Hemsworth says he has a cousin that has loaned them the uh, this cabin out in the middle of nowhere for uh, a long weekend where they can get away and just party and all that stuff that young people do before they are horribly murdered by uh, mutant family members. And in between scenes of them, 
you know, going about the business of this horror movie in which they are, you know, going to this cabin in the middle of nowhere. Um, you have intercut with that these scenes of this very mundane kind of bureaucratic world where Richard Jenkins and Bradley Whitford are a little, you know, especially Brad, Bradley Whitford, a little cocksure um, about uh, their job. And you've got Amy Acker as the, the woman who works in the chem lab, who is kind of there to ask some questions to let the audience know what's going on. And of course, what's going on in the movie Cabin in the Woods is that all of this is a, a grand effort to appease the old gods that once a year you have to have this sacrifice and you have to kill these characters in this relatively specific order. Sometimes it's a, a little bushy in the middle, but you start with the whore and you end with the virgin. And whether or not the, the virgin survives or not is kind of irrelevant. Um, it, it's more that she has to suffer. And so they they basically stack this cabin with all these like supernatural uh you know gates that will unleash some horror upon the people who have uh, been brought to this cabin and in this case it's uh, a family of like zombie uh hillbillies that are uh, are killing them off one one by one and there's a in fact one of my favorite things about cabin in the woods is it gets that part real right like that part of it's kind of brutal and bloody and one of the zombie uh rednecks uses a bear trap on a chain as a weapon and i think that's pretty rad something i don't recall seeing in other movies and i like the fact that this movie even if, like if you removed all of the meta stuff it, like it would still be a pretty good horror movie um, but because it is more than that, because it is this, uh, this plot to appease these old gods, um, it allows Goddard and Whedon to kind of have fun with the various tropes of horror and like, Hey, why is this girl acting so horned up? Well, it's because they have been putting chemicals in her, uh, hair bleach to make her a, a little dumber. And that when she and Chris Hemsworth are going out into the woods to make out, they pump in pheromone spray to make them even hornier. So that's why they're having sex out in the middle of nowhere. In addition to those little, uh, not I guess they are kind of critiques of the genre of like, why do these characters act like this? Why are they so stupid? Um, you also get these great little character moments of comedy like where they, they have a guy named the Harbinger, a, a, a guy that is essentially the one who warns all the kids about, like, you should never go up in that cabin in the first place. Essentially the Crazy Ralph position, right? And he calls in to give his Crazy Ralph spiel and realizes at a certain point, he's like, wait a second, am I on speakerphone? You know, that's really rude. And Bradley Whitford's like, yeah, 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 sorry about that. Uh, you are, I'm going to take you off speakerphone. And then doesn't, and the guy goes on a little bit and like, you know, Richard Jenkins starts snickering and he knows that he's still on speakerphone. And that kind of thing is a great gag. And it's so specific to this kind of movie where that joke and, and again, that sort of mundane office kind of humor is juxtaposed with, you know, these people getting horribly murdered on screen. And there, one of my favorite moments in the movie is when they've sort of popped the champagne after uh, ev all the characters they believe are dead except for the Virgin. And she is being horribly attacked on this boat dock in the background on a screen while everyone else is celebrating. And, you know, it, from a thematic point of view, it really does kind of get at what makes people sort of awful and shitty, which is we are ultimately very selfish that we're very quick to allow the individual to suffer for or the needs of the many, you know, the, as, as Spock himself would say, the needs of uh, the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. And, you know, on one level, on a mathematical level, that is correct. On a human level, 
what an awful way to go about a society that is a very utilitarian kind of point of view and ignores the plight of, of just general, regular, schmegular people. And so I think that's one of the things that Cabin in the Woods is, is getting at is, you know, if, if we are willing to sacrifice everything in the name of logical bureaucracy, are we really a species worth saving? And that's uh, sort of the fundamental question of the movie, and it gets an answer um, in the form of, you know, our fool character and our virgin kind of having that conversation of, like, is this, are we the kind of people who are going to save the world? Are we going to try to save each other, or are we just going to watch it all burn and, you know, let the chips fall where they may? I think, uh... I think it's the main character, our virgin character, who says, give somebody else a chance. You know, we, we have done nothing with this planet other than ruin it and be shitty to one another. So, I mean, are we a species really worth saving? The, uh, you know, the answer given by the cabin in the woods is eh, probably not. We're probably not worth saving. Um, but there, along the way, there are some great turns. Like Sigourney Weaver appears in a, in a, a bit of a an oversized cameo as the woman who is running uh, this institution and trying to keep it safe. Um, the real centerpiece of the movie, though, that third act, once they figure out, like, oh, this is all sort of a weird simulation, and we're going to get down into the belly of, of the operation center and so forth, and along the way, release all of the monsters that they've got on tap... Uh, that are there to, you know, be summoned by these sacrifices every year. Uh, whether it's kind of, a, you know, the low-rent pinhead or a giant spider or a unicorn or the uh, ballet dancing girl that's face is nothing but teeth. You know, all of that stuff uh, is released into this facility. And I remember seeing that in the theater for the first time. And I was just like, why is every movie not this? This is the greatest thing I think I've ever seen. And uh, there is a slow motion worthy shot that is not done in slow motion where you see all of these things come out of an elevator and just decimate a bunch of soldiers that are there to, to kill our heroes. And it happens so fast and there's so much going on screen at once. It's like you know, one of them Avengers movies where everything is happening on screen all at once and you just need to stop the movie and follow one character and see what they're up to and then rewind it and follow another character. And it's rewarding. It's really good and fun. Um, and that's kind of the genius of Cabin in the Woods is that it works as a horror movie. It works as a satire of horror movies. It works as sort of social commentary and it works as just, hey, do you want to switch off your brain and just see some cool stuff? And all of that comes together uh, to make a movie that I think is really special. Uh, I don't know, it, it, you know, it, it's like a found footage trick. Like we, we, I've talked about this on various podcasts about Blair Witch, that because of the way that Blair Witch was marketed and because nobody had really done that before, that you can only get away with that one time. You can only release Blair Witch the way that Blair Witch was released once, because then everybody's onto the scam. And that's kind of how Cabot in the Woods is, is that it's a movie you can only make one time, because once you've made it, then th the gig is up. You know, that every time you're watching a movie, like if you couldn't watch The Cabin in the Woods 2 and be surprised that, oh, this is really a, a way to appease these Lovecraftian elder gods... Um, you know, there's such nice little texture moments, all the stuff about how every culture is different. And so, uh, the monsters at the core of, uh, of, of their culture are different. And so that's what's unleashed upon their versions. And it only takes one. That's the other thing I like. It's just one country has to succeed for all of this to work out. And they, they kind of lean on the Japanese because they're like, well, the Japanese have never, uh, not you know, made their sacrifice quotient. And when you get that cutaway to what's going on in this Japanese classroom where a bunch of schoolgirls are, like, singing a traditional Japanese ghost into being a happy frog, and 
Bradley Whitford freaking out about it. It's just such a moment of great comedic beauty. And as someone who loves Asian horror films and all that, uh, the, the seeing that on screen just did my heart good. It's so ridiculous and silly and funny and and strangely accurate all at the same time. And maybe that's sort of my review of Kevin in the Woods writ large is it's wonderful and funny and silly and scary and all of those things all at the same time. Um, whether it's Chris Hemsworth yelling at his girlfriend for reading books at the beginning, which is a really funny joke. I learned it from watching you, Dad. You know, that kind of stuff. Or it's uh, the stoner character being the secret hero of the movie in his collapsible, you know, travel mug bong and all that. Like, it just, it never ceases to be uh, clever and fun. And it's one thing to be clever. There, There's an old line from the movie Harvey where Jimmy Stewart at one point says, uh, in life I found you be, you may be either oh so smart or oh so pleasant. For many years I was smart. I recommend pleasant. Um, Cabin in the Woods is both smart and pleasant. And I don't know of a better combination. It's hard to find a movie that is this smart and this watchable all at the same time. Um, you know, we talked about Possession recently, which is a very smart and artistic film, but there are times when you watch it where I'm like, I have no finger hold on this movie. It is careening from one scene to another, and I don't know what to expect. And that's good, but I also don't know what any of it means, and I have to sit and really scratch my head and think about it, which is also good and valuable like I, I believe in active viewing of a movie to try to you know keep engaged with it and think about what the characters are doing and what they're thinking and feeling and how that relates to the film and what the film is trying to tell you as a person all of that is really valuable but it's really nice when a movie can do all of that and still be really entertaining so that even if you just want to switch off your brain for a second and just let the movie happen then that's cool. That can happen in this movie, and and you can then re-engage with it when you feel like, uh, and you're going to be entertained and equally rewarded for either of those viewing styles, whether it's passive or, or active viewing. So, yeah, I just love Cabin in the Woods, and watching it for this 31 Days of Halloween, it's like, man, this is you know up there with the perfect horror films to watch for this time of year, because... It, it is fun. It's a good party movie. Um, it's great to watch with a crowd. I know I saw it with a crowd for the first time, and, and people were hooting and hollering, and it was just terrific. And it's also great just to kick back by yourself, which I also did, and just kind of curl under the blanket and let the movie unfold. And even though I know the gimmick, I know the gags, it's still really fun because it's still funny, and I like all these characters, even you know, Bradley Whitford's weird obsession with the merman and all that stuff. It's still very fun and very funny. Uh, so I just can't say enough good things about cabin in the woods. Obviously, if you've never seen it, you should, if you have seen it and it's been a while, go back and revisit it. It's such a great movie to watch this time of year. Uh, speaking of this time of year, it's almost Halloween, everybody. And, uh, we've only got a few days of these left by all means, leave me a message. You can find me at, uh, Legion podcasts, on uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can also find me at Dark Parade Pod uh, at, on uh, the Twitter as well. Um, obviously, there's the Dark Parade Facebook group that we're still getting off the ground. So, you know, join up, say hi. I, I do a lot of conversing in those uh, in, the, in that particular Facebook group uh, as well as on Twitter. So come by, let me know what you're watching. Let me know what your thoughts are on Cabin in the Woods. I know there are some people that don't like it. And I think that's contrarian, but you know, come by and let me know. Uh, and most of all, have yourselves a great Wednesday. Have a fantastic uh, rest of the day. Go out there, do good work, be spooky out there. We've only got a handful of days left, and and oh boy, uh, is it the time of year for it? I'm so excited about this Halloween. I, I just can't stand it. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow with the 28th of our 31 films. Can you believe it? Uh, on the 31 days of Halloween here on Legion Podcast. So I will see you then. Uh -huh.